Okay, great. Well, it's awesome to have you all here. Welcome, everyone. So this is our official amazing college student panel. Of course, some of you are done with college at this point, but we've all had a chance to work together at some point along the way in different capacities. And I, I was so excited to invite you all to come and join us for a conversation. I've never done this before, and I thought it would be really cool to look back and let some of the younger students learn from you and your experience and uh, so they can start creating their vision for how they want to move into college and through college. So I, I'd love to begin with just the, the basic question of what do you all remember about the admissions process? For some of you, that was a long time ago. I think Avery, you were the one I worked with the earliest of everyone here. Um, and just maybe we can touch on where, you know, what you remember, what stood out, what the challenges were. And Avery, maybe you want to start since that was, I think it was back in 2016, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. <laughs> Great. What do you remember? Um, I remember the admissions process being uh, fairly like it was something looming over my head. I'd always thought about college and knew I wanted to do that yeah. um, and knew that I wanted to go to a good school. But the idea of what you needed to get in and what you needed to write in your essay and what schools were out there and what they offered was kind of all like kept secret. Uh -huh. um, it felt like I felt like I could never figure out exactly what was out there and what I could offer and how to position myself. Mm -hmm. um, so the admissions process, there was, I mean, I visited every school I applied to. I wow. researched them very, very heavily, yep. um, both on a uh, sports side, because I uh, ended up uh, doing rowing at the college level, yeah, um, or coxing to be more specific, yeah, um, and then but also academically. And with your help, it was a lot more clear. I feel like what I needed to highlight, and I mean, ask a eighteen-year-old, "Who are you?" in right. five hundred <laughs> words. It's a hard question to answer in unlimited yeah. words or at all, exactly. um, but yeah, it was very easy. I feel like, like, I remember our first call and you were like, just tell me like some stories about you. And I was yeah. Like, yeah. This is going to go nowhere. Like <laughs> it, I'm not going to get an essay out of this. Right. Um, and then we ended up getting my essay, which I like ended up loving and thought yeah. was a really good summation of kind of the things that I experienced, what I wanted in a school and who I was. And then yeah. um, I was told that by several admissions officers at <laughs> the school I ended up going to because I got into yeah. the um, early flying program. So it, at Dartmouth. I think it all just yeah. got, yes, yeah, yeah, at Dartmouth. And it got very clear very quickly. And then yeah. it was also nice because with our timeline that you had set for us, I was done with all of my essays for all of my schools by August. So while my friends <laughs> yeah. were all starting essays or figuring, like going on tours, I was yeah. like, done. Done. <laughs> that yeah, it was yeah, like good to go. You were super organized with that whole thing. And so, yeah. But yeah, awesome. And so, so now you're, you've been through your full four years at Dartmouth and we'll touch on what that experience was like. Um, and now where are you at? You've been working for Microsoft, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. a product marketing manager at Microsoft. Wow. How long have you been doing that? So I will be rounding out my first year in August. Okay. Um, wow. I'm a part of the uh, Accelerated Connections uh, Rotation Program and what that they have that? for marketing. So oh, for awesome. one year, we'll do one job and then we can choose where we go for our second year, but it has to be oh. on a completely different part different. of the company, but still in Microsoft. So a different okay. product. Interesting. Um, and then for our third year, we get to choose uh, our final role. Like if we want to stay in our second role and go back to our first role or do an entirely different one. Oh, that's um, interesting. What a cool yeah, program. Cool. So it's a, it's a three-year program with Microsoft. It's technically a two-year because after you graduate that two years, you go forever into your third role. Okay. Oh, got it. Okay, great. And do you know what you want to choose for your second year or are you still? Um, 
Yeah. So right now I'm in modern life search and devices. Okay. Um, and then, and so that's the consumer side of like word, PowerPoint, et cetera. And then yep. being edge and friends. Um, okay. But I want to go to the enterprise side. So probably to Azure cloud, okay. um, something in there, maybe security. Wow. This is a really cool thing. And then do you see yourself just staying with Microsoft or doing a graduate degree or what do you see? Yeah. Well, after COVID, all of tech pretty much has gone remote. Yeah. Um, Microsoft is doing it on a team by team basis, but everyone seems very open to if you want to be remote. Um, yeah. And so that was my only thing with Microsoft is Seattle is fine, but it's not LA. Uh, and that's yes. where I want to be. Okay. Um, yep. And so I've talked to my second role managers and they're pretty open with being remote. So very cool. other than that, I love the company more than anything. So I plan to stay there. I think I'll, I might be a lifer. <laughs> oh, wow. Isn't that amazing that you can say that already? That's so cool. I want to circle back to that in a little bit when we talk more about going through college and then beyond. And maybe for now, what I'd love to do is I, I think I'll just go in order of who I worked with in, you know, logistically around the time. Alex, I think you were in, we started uh, maybe a year after I started with Avery and, and we started, I think around the beginning of junior year. Does that sound about right to you? Yeah. yeah that, that sounds better. It is, it has been a while. Yeah. Yeah. What do you remember about our work together and kind of where you were with college and all of that at that point? Yeah, I think, um, I just remember starting like pretty early with like stuff that wasn't that much related to college. That was more like kind of, uh, just like kind of like understanding myself better, I guess, just like exploring. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just like building up your person, uh, and like yeah. understand yourself better, which I kind of liked a lot because I never really thought about that before. Yeah, uh, that was and, a really cool. Yeah, moment. and I wasn't <laughs> really, um, uh, I could feel like on like every like two, I don't know, on top of my college stuff until like you came in. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, it's hard to be, know how to think about it yeah. you know, on your own. Yeah. Yeah, but I, but I think overall the process, I kind of enjoyed it because um like writing the different personal essays I guess for different colleges and then right I think I forgot to call it but like the one you use for um every school I thought that was yeah. like it's pretty interesting for me because I, I kind of liked answering questions um that they were asking and I thought yeah um like throughout the process you it, it helped me like just give me confidence kind of just answer um like write essays that that are just like from myself that came from me yeah um so I thought um yeah so I thought that was very useful and yeah <laughs> yeah and we so a lot of the work we did since we were we weren't just doing like Avery and I just did applications together um but you and I got to work on a project right. and a couple of different cool projects do you want to tell us a little bit about what that was like yeah uh I think the one I remember most, I think it was something inspired by the humans of New York, which was yes. something, yeah, I, yeah. And then I think that really helped me a lot, actually, um, yeah. just to get me, it was, yeah, it was basically humans in New York. So I went, I went around and interviewed kind of my classmates, people I knew or just or people I didn't knew. And then that kind of just, uh, kind of like made me a more, like very more open person overall in general. And that then, is a big piece of our work. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Humans of New York, just so in case anyone doesn't know here or listening later to our call, um, it's uh, with, is this uh, photographer Brandon Stanton in New York who lost his job, I think like 10, 12 years ago and didn't know what to do. So started just walking around the streets of New York and taking pictures of whoever he saw, you know, the Wall Street banker or the homeless person or the mom or anyone uh and and then he started asking lots of really cool questions and it's become sort of a phenomenon um and now there's you know that he's traveled all over the world and it's not just new york and now there's little pockets of you know seattle you know humans of seattle or humans of whatever and yours was humans of weston right, right? yeah that yeah and that, i believe that's what i wrote about in like my um common essay or the yeah the yes, one that like, I remember yes. that so yeah. vividly and yeah so that and was putting, I think that was a yeah. overall really good experience because 
um yeah i think it just helped me like like besides like you know using that as like material for um like college i think it just helped me through a lot because yeah i think like i was super shy back then uh, yeah then I you needed, were yep i needed like a bit of a push from from you so, I remember yeah. we would spend so many conversations saying like, okay, how can we help you get the confidence and the courage to go talk to strangers in your school and ask for interviews? That was a big right. piece of what we did. And that was right. super challenging, but you did it. And then by the end of the year, didn't you get a standing ovation for putting this montage together? Um, I, I, yeah, maybe. I think you told I me that. I, Something maybe, like okay, that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's really cool. And now t tell us where you're at and what year you're in. Yeah, so right now I'm a third year at Northeastern, um, but uh, my plan is to graduate in five years because of like the co-op program Northeastern have. So I'm very gonna, cool, which is basically you're going to be interning for like a, a whole year. So it's yeah, so it's like, yeah, so it's is basically that, you have four years in school, but graduate with yeah. like um, a year of experience, which experience. is pretty nice. And when is your co-op? Is that this coming year or? Yeah, so I actually got one for this fall. Um, which is pretty exciting so I yeah I've been in school for like you know over a year straight I took summer classes last year and I was like oh, All right, I need okay. a break so you need a break yes okay <laughs> yeah great. I land a pretty nice call for myself um, where which is, is it um it's at Genentech okay the, their company is yep. at California they're a biotechnology company but I'll be doing uh, UX and graphic design for them oh fantastic um, so yeah. it's pretty exciting yeah so yeah also my major is computer science and uh, graphic okay. design so oh fantastic yeah we did a lot around design and design thinking and you mm -hmm. got to right do right exactly an yeah. internship at your dad's company doing some design there and that was also a big piece of what we did is developing the design thinking and the, mm -hmm. the design component itself we spent right. a lot of time with that yeah and that produced some beautiful essays in our work together yeah yeah, yeah. Awesome. actually yeah, it might this might be more fitted for like the college experience stuff yeah, or later, yeah. but like it actually took me a while to like settle down on design. Um, okay. So, yeah. Yep. Great. I'd love to circle back to that yeah. piece. That's going to be really interesting. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, of course. William, let's go to you. Um, tell us a little bit. So we worked together, I think a little bit. We started a few months maybe after I started with Alex. I think we started maybe halfway through your junior year. Yes, yeah. yes, that's right. What do you remember about that whole process? Uh, yeah, so I think I was quite disorganized as a high school student. <laughs> Even if I was already junior, I still have some problems with that. So yeah. uh, I, what I remember about the, that process is um, I had no clue that what I should do. Yeah. I mean, I follow what my roommates are doing. You know, he is doing the forms. Okay, I do my forms for schools. He's writing the essays. I try to come up with something. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. But I had no clue how to proceed into a um, into a um, profile that I, I can actually represent myself. Yeah. Um, and also, I wasn't really a literature person. My writing and um, stuffs were not really good you know I, I do math a lot but yeah. writing really wasn't my thing yeah so uh, I remember we spent a lot of time brainstorming how to express my passion for mathematics yes. and during that process what I think is most important for me is I took the time to actually consider it do I really love math um yeah. like I, I I thought I did yeah uh, actually I do uh, but like that time uh, during that time, I actually confirmed that I do love math and I want to proceed into academia. Mm -hmm. I think this is really important because uh, unlike many other majors, studying pure mathematics really uh, requires you have enough passion and patience yeah. and everything uh, to do so. Mm -hmm. So um, during our time, uh, our talk, um, we discussed about why I love math. Um, yeah. How is it? How is it? Um, represented in my life um, yep. why I need math as a, my career yep. so all these things really give me a guide for um for my major as well yeah uh, for beautiful major yeah yeah and I remember a big piece of what we did so when you came in we we wanted to see if we could create some kind of project or something that it gave expression to your interest in math and that was what you ended up doing do you remember the work you did with your um math team yes yes indeed uh so uh 
probably very much like Alex, I wasn't really a confident person, uh, especially talking to classmates and teachers. Yeah. But um, so we talked about how we can improve uh, math team a little bit, bit better. And I think it was my last year, senior year, I became the captain of math team. So yeah. we yeah. developed a lot of plans for uh, improving math team uh, math teams training plans for example yeah. doing uh, more rigorous and more organized trainings and lecturings and I yep. actually gave some lectures myself yeah uh, so it's like taking the role of the coach a little bit and uh, sharing in the Absolutely. coaching responsibility yeah. yes and be more uh, rigorous when we are selecting team members to go to competitions mm -hmm. uh, and prepare for the exams uh, more carefully and stuff like, stuff like that um yeah. before that our math team uh, was organized but uh, definitely our our project helped the math team to be uh much better in terms yeah. of that was what i remember is that we're that was yeah. where we really put our energy so sometimes like with alex you know we created a whole new project and jocelyn too um, but with you, we were working with what you were already doing because you were really busy. You know, you were halfway through junior year. That's the crunch year with all the testing and all of that. And there wasn't a lot of yeah. time to go do something brand new. So we worked with where you were already at and you just brought a higher level of leadership and creativity to your team. And of course, that made a huge difference um, for, you know, your admissions process, for the essays. And yeah, that was a very cool cool experience yes yes i mean i probably wasn't a, a leader a very leader person uh, right. i probably wasn't good at leading but when yeah. it comes to something that i'm interested in and i have confidence in things becomes much more natural for me yes. and it's much easier it was much easier for me to do all these things I think that's a great point is that a lot of people don't think of themselves as leaders like Alex I know that was true for you Jocelyn I think that was true for you as well. Avery I know you have a lot of natural leadership and Caroline we we talked about your form of leadership in your essays which we'll get to in a minute. But um, that that's a really common thing is this idea of like I'm not really a leader I don't lead up clubs i'm not like super extra like a lot of people think you have to be extroverted to be a leader and what i always loved to say to all of you and i say to my students is it's not about the title and it's not about extroversion it's really about exactly what you said william taking something that you're interested in and building that looking around where's the need where's the interest how can i take what i and care i care about and i want to make a difference in and create something with that and so that's that's leadership right there. Yeah. It's just yeah. we have a oh, sort of outdated idea of what leadership is. They're sort of given, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Awesome. Is there anything more you wanted to add about that piece? Uh, about the, uh, you mean the admission or process just the part? whole admissions process. Is there anything else that stands out for yes, you? Yes, yes. Uh, well, just one more thing. You know, our, our essays, I really loved how, I still um, remember, I remember all of yeah. your essays, but I love oh, yeah, those yeah. essays. Yeah, I, I actually, yeah, I still still using pieces of it in my uh, PhD. I used it in my master's uh, application as well oh, as my PhD fantastic. application. Fantastic, yeah. that is so cool. Yeah, you know, the ideas still remain true for me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. so vividly your essay on your interest in philosophy and I remember that opening you in the classroom reading quietly and other your friends kind of rushing around and wanting to get yes, you to do something else and you wanting to stay in this place of deep study and contemplation that was really cool that was a beautiful yeah, essay yeah. and i think because that was sort of a surprise element to your application you had your interest in mathematics and we wrote a beautiful essay about how that developed and how you gave to your community through your through your skills in math but that piece around the philosophy and also your growth on the field as a soccer player remember that one too yes there yes. was a lot of the, and i think these are the pieces that are sort of end up being surprising on an, and in yes. application yeah because yeah i was just talking with one of my seniors um actually avery with jackson your uh, your brother um he he said um I didn't think any of these stories were even worth talking about. Like they just didn't seem interesting, you know? And 
And so what we discovered is that when we add in pieces that aren't necessarily obvious, right, or like don't seem relevant, they, they just add so much about who you are and your personality. Well, am, yeah. Yeah. That was fun discovering that with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you for that piece, William. Jocelyn, mm -hmm. I think I should have gone to you because you might have been before Avery, you might have been the one that I started working with earlier, except I think Alex, you and Jocelyn were both uh, in the, the first round of the Dream School Project group program that I ran five, six years ago, right? So Jocelyn, let's go to you because we ended up working closely one-on-one, -on -one, very closely one-on-one -on -one for four years after that um, the Dream School Project Mastermind program, which wasn't even a mastermind then. What do you remember? That was a lot of time we had together. It was amazing. Yeah, I might need you to like pull some Help us remember. Out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's a really long time, but yeah. So college application? Yeah, or just the process itself, whatever stands out to you um, if you look back. I, I think it's a it's kind of important to like give a little bit of background for my family. Like yeah, what, like <clears throat> my parents and I like came to the US like when I was like 12. So yeah. I think for, for me a lot of it is like I didn't really know the culture and kind of how the system works. So um yeah. um just in terms of that. So like looking back to <laughs> the process with you, I think I would categorize it as like a huge chunk of it is more on the personal growth rather than the application. Yeah. And um, for the whole time you were kind of like, oh, we, we, like, we will worry about that later and um, <laughs> we don't need yeah. to worry about it now, which I, now looking back, I think it's, it's, it's really good because now my mom has like completely different approach with my younger sister. And, oh, that's um, great to hear. Like, Very like, cool. Like, like, I think looking back, I just, realize what I know in high school was so little about how, like like the college application itself and right. it, it wasn't like I planned to do these things and you know and it was more like I got to the point of senior year and looking back like oh what are some things we can like pull out and yeah. um stuff so uh yeah do you want to have yeah, some your questions? your evolution of how you developed your interest in your process was so so interesting and it's so reflective of real life right which I think school often doesn't feel like it's connected to real life right and it's, so you started with your interest your your passion you saw this film on dolphins being slaughtered in Japan I remember that was a, right. a mastermind and then that spawned interest from there and to tell us a little bit about what happened from there oh yeah so like I saw a um, documentary about like I think it's called like oh shoot I don't even remember the, the something name something Cove I, oh yeah I think right? it's called Cove yeah um, and I think that was just anger. I mean, it was just a really well done film. So of course, like you would get really like angry. Afterwards. Passionate. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for a long time, I thought, oh, that's like passion, you know, like, because I'm feeling emotional about it. But I, as time progressed, like that emotion start um, to fade. And actually, like, I just started college. So um, this first year, I like, I didn't take any environmental science class and at tours like the spring I was even kind of questioning I was like like Jocelyn is still is this still like what you're interested in because I right. think I just I don't feel the emotional drive with it like as, as much, much when I first learned about the issue but yeah. I realized that like now I'm just looking at it more from like different perspectives and yeah. and like um because sustainability you can literally connect it with any discipline Anything, everything right now I'm looking yeah. for the angle that I want to um connect sustainability to but Beautiful. back then in high school so I watched a film so I thought maybe I was really into marine biology I did some camps at um, New England Aquarium yeah and I remember we had to like dissect a shark or something yeah I just thought you were like no <laughs> I was like no 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 no, no this is not for me and yeah. um so yeah I switched and I remember Elizabeth was saying how like maybe Jocelyn you should like take a step back and you know maybe climate change is is, is the better one so I started doing a lot of research and I was into like um the sustainability with fashion industry for a while yeah um, 
fast fashion and um I think I think I think ultimately I I think the the core that I wanted was to have to see um behavior change with people yeah uh, about yeah. being more sustainable so mm-hmm. like in high school I think that was something I always guilt myself was that I like I will do clubs in high school and we would um Oh, I think one of the biggest thing was um, towards the end, I actually worked on making a composting program and started right. that in- um, At your school, yeah. At my school. So like, I think for me, I just really cared about the actual change. And that was something yeah. I, I, keep, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm I, I think that was the motivation that was like, okay, like, you're not doing enough. You're not doing enough because people are not, still not changing. They still don't know recycling, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, it was just a lot. <laughs> And that was the biggest question for you. So when you ended up coming down to Asheville for your summer before your senior year, you created this beautiful film with your mentor and uh, your filmmaking mentor. And um, that was the big question that you had is how can I instill and inspire true change in other people? And and you you had to ask some deep questions about that, didn't you? Yeah. And there was a lot of like... um, debates in my head and that was like kept like fighting and yep. because yep. people were saying different things and I'm someone who's easily convinced by others so like I don't have a stand like a firm ground so like people say something else oh I think I agree with that and someone says like the opposite thing and, <laughs> and in my yeah. head like, why can't like why <laughs> how can both I can't how can like I can agree with both right so like yeah. I think that was the that was the biggest thing that was a really experience but I think probably in life we'll go through like different like cycles of that (laughs) absolutely and and the whole process of your kind of I think of it as like jumping from lily pad to lily pad right you tried this and then this and then this and then this and it wasn't linear right it would often felt messy you know even in junior year you said Oh, maybe I'll make a film, you know, and and it was at first going to be an animated film inspired by this beautiful film, uh, this Chinese film that you had seen about the environment and you thought, right. oh, maybe I'll do something like that. And then that that and I said, well, you know, you're in junior year. I don't know if you're going to get the animation <laughs> skills, you know, and as quickly as you want. So how about we create a? You just go ahead and create a documentary and it, you produce this gorgeous three minute film which took the whole summer and deep reflection but right. your your whole process was just trying this which led to this which led to this and now you're saying you're in college and you're not necessarily still connected to the field of marine biology or climate change but you're connected to the passion that it woke in you for tr- inspiring change in the realm of sustainability yeah so yeah. like a little bit about um, the college experience. I think when I first, so right now I'm at Wellesley College and um, when I first got in, there was this like, I think econ is huge there. Like Huge, they have a great econ department there. (laughs) Econ is huge and like, I like, I just kind of got sucked into all the clubs and stuff and you know, like they really know how to network and okay oh great themselves and they really like I think the thought of like they really know what they want and like the steps and stuff I was like oh like these people are like uh, like the ones I like I want to be and blah 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 yeah yeah I I think for me like I I kept doubting I was like oh do I want to go in econ and like do I not and like um and and part of it's for my mom but um so but anyway so I, I I went through that whole phase and I, um, but I think recently I've landed that I'm, I might, I might be interested into like architecture and urban okay. planning just yeah. so like, I don't know. I think, I think, right, like, I think for me, knowing myself, um, work related to design and creativity will excite me more rather than yeah. following like a systematic kind of like um procedure and like I I, yeah. I hate following rules <laughs> <laughs> over and over again but yeah. I think so like um yeah so that was just interesting how like yeah I, I I just I remember like I would take one class like I took a writing class on um our history and I really liked it I was like oh maybe I'll go into our history and I took a class <laughs> on, like computer science I was like okay coding seems like kind of fun you know like it feels really rewarding yeah. after you get the codes to work and blah yeah. blah blah so 
I think that's just always me I guess like I'm just always jumping around and like, yeah <laughs> and that's the point of college honestly and when we in a minute when we touch on that with each of you about your college experience that's the point is to try things out and change and not just get on a track necessarily some people go in like William you had a very clear track you knew which direction you wanted to go but for a lot of people it's a t such a time of exploration yeah it's really cool to hear about that yeah. Oh, I, I also want to say about like the college application. Mm. Um, like I know one of the questions you had was like, if you have any advice, my only advice <laughs> is that if you can apply to schools early, do that. Like <laughs> for me, yeah. I, I, my, my thought was that, oh, like, you know, EA and um, regular, like there's no binding. Right. Whatsoever, so it's okay. Like I can just apply all of them for like regular stuff. Yeah. Not about the waiting time. The like waiting? I cannot. I know. That at all. It's so not working. Like ED, and I got rejected. So like the and I didn't do like ED two either. So I did the whole time. I was like, my, all my friends are like racking. going and and blah blah blah. So I literally heard like all my decisions in regular. So I think yeah, that was, that's a long time of waiting. <laughs> wondering. Told, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's great advice. The waiting time. But I think another thing is that like college is a lot about match and for for me yeah. I, I I like I change constantly so so I think before like when you choose your ED school you think oh this is the one for you but I think towards yeah. like was hearing the decision yeah. from that school I realized okay like that might not be for me so mm -hmm. I think if you're someone that's like you don't really know who you are quite or you don't really know what type of schools like that's good for you kind of just leave it and apply to different kinds and leave the decision to like I think at first I was yeah. like oh, I'm too wealthy like that's not it like it's way too close to home and <laughs> no it's just down the road from you <laughs> yeah so like I was like no 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 but like I yeah. think oh, I'm, I'm there I realized like the people who I'm like exposed to are like yeah you can kind of see there's there's kind of a trend and like yeah. interestingly I was talking to a lot of people and we were talking about what we wrote for like our personal statement and I just like from all the people I talked to who got into walls a lot of them are about like personal growth so yeah. I don't know I think there's there's something you know like yep. I think different schools pick different kinds of essays and you know they're yeah, kind of agreed do these personal growth um kind of essays but I, I just thought that was something I wanted to share because yeah, that, that's, that's great really, advice. Like, if you don't know what schools that's good for you, just leave it to, you know. Yeah, they, I, applying to a range. I love I love that. I think that's really smart. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Jocelyn. And Carolyn, it's your turn. So I got to work with you last year, and it seems like it was maybe longer than that, but, you know, about like a year and a half ago, maybe. And um, and we got, you came to me because, um, tell us a little bit about what brought us together. Um, so I, for the first two years of college, I actually went to Northeastern. So hi, Alex. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, um, uh, I just, um, I was studying computer science and math, but um, I was just a little like, I, I, I knew like Northeastern would be fine. It's, it's really like, it's, it's a really good school, but it wasn't quite the right fit because like, I had a slight more, slightly more interest in like, like sort of the theory, like how, how things work as opposed to how to use them. Yes. And what with like Northeastern's whole co-op program, they're very, very focused on like, how do you use this so that you can go get, like, go get a co-op, go get a job, go get yep. an internship. And so like, it just, it, like, I knew I would be fine if I just, if I stayed to, at Northeastern all four years, but I just like, I, I, I there's like this small, like dissatisfaction. Um, so I like, I decided like, okay, I'm going to like, I'll try transferring and see if I can go somewhere that will like satisfy that need for like the theory. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's how I ended up working with Elizabeth and um, yeah. uh, Susan, who actually, yeah. uh, that reminds me, Jocelyn, I think actually uh, Elizabeth sent me your essay as an example to read just like, <laughs> and it was, re I really liked it. Um, oh my God, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Was, I, rem I, I distinctly remember like the yeah. like it was like marine biology watching your video and like getting really passionate about it so and I really enjoyed reading it yeah um what do I remember okay I so I'm a little I guess sort of different in that like I got two goes at the the, the undergrad admissions off uh process right, um the right. first time was a struggle 
Yeah. Um, I, I, I am not a writer. I am a CS major and a math major. I, yeah. I do not enjoy writing. So <laughs> the first time through, like it was a struggle and, yeah. um, cause I, I also like in a, on top of like, just not enjoying writing that much. I just didn't really know how to like craft a story about myself to tell to, yeah. um, admissions office. Yeah. Um, so Elizabeth helped me like so much with that on the second time through. Um, and um, yeah, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the second time we, you know, you did the admissions process, what, would, what do you notice about, what, what did you notice about what the difference was from the first time of struggling through these essays? How did the second process, when we worked together, how did it compare? Um, it was definitely, I mean, it, it definitely helps to have someone who really, really knows how to do writing, look at your essays. Mm -hmm. Um, I, like, I think, like, uh, as someone already said, like, it, like, these little stories about yourself, like, you don't, don't think they're important, but, like, yeah. they tell a lot. Yeah. Um, like, I had, like, the stories existed. I sort of had some notion of them, but I just didn't know how to put them into, like, into yeah. ni nice words. <laughs> um, so yeah. it, um, so that definitely helped a lot. Um, I also, I, I, like the first time through, um, so chances are if you're coming to Elizabeth for help for colleges, you ha may ha or may not have like mildly helicopter parents. Um, <laughs> yeah, so got like, lots of it, like the second time through, I felt like I had a lot more like control over my essays. Like the first time through my, my mom low-key took over. Um, yeah. so, yeah. and I that I, so like, I didn't, like on top of just like Northeastern wasn't the great, greatest fit. Like I, I didn't like anything I turned in mm -hmm. the first time through. Like, yeah. I, like I, I, I got as far, far as like writing a, the full set, set of essays for MIT for early action. Yeah. And then my mom swooped in and changed everything. Like I liked that first set of essays and then yeah. it just, and then I just couldn't use any of it. Yeah. 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 So um I, my advice would be have a spine like actually like write <laughs> what you want to write yeah um don't yeah. let someone else like hijack your process because yeah ideally you only have to do this once <laughs> um, right uh, yeah exactly yeah that's a really good point as I think a lot of people who like you who are don't feel like natural writers or sometimes even when they feel like natural writers, the, the admissions essays are completely different from anything you really have to write anywhere else. And, and it can be easy to feel like, well, I don't know. Okay. So I should just listen to this adult or this other more experienced person. And, and so well, I think what you're saying is a lot of our work together was about finding your authentic stories, what really resonated and felt true for you. Would you say that yeah. was a big piece of it? Yeah. And, and a lot of it is about our conversations, right? I think all of you, like Avery saying, you know, I remember our first conversation, just tell me some stories. And, and that's, that's the way that we did for all of you, right? It was just a lot of just deep, deep conversations and just looks like we're not even writing or working on the application essays a lot. Yeah. Would you say that was your experience too? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, is there anything else you would add about, and so now you're, you're at Cornell, you just finished your first year there. So now you're heading into your se senior year next year. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I think that was about like most of what I wanted to say. Cause like, yeah, the, the, the biggest, the, the part that made me like the happiest about this process was that, I mean, oh, having Elizabeth to help me made writing the essays infinitely easier but like being able to like actually actually tell your own story like yeah. definitely makes it easier absolutely yeah and did you feel proud of the essays that you got to turn in that second time yeah de definitely yeah. great that's awesome thank you so much for sharing that well, I'm going to go to Avery because Avery, I'm aware that you've got to go to your something really soon. I would just love for you to talk a little bit about your college experience. How, like, how did it evolve for you? Did you know what major and did you stick with that or did you change, yeah. you know, talk to us a little bit about that whole thing. Yeah. So I got into Dartmouth's fly-in program. Um, so that was during my senior year or no junior year um okay. 
of high school. And so I like remember getting off the bus and just being like, I love this place. I don't know why this is home. I don't, I have, and I did not even want to go to the flying program. I was like, I'm from LA. It's in the middle of the woods. Yeah, There's right. no way this is going to be a fit. Yep. Um, but I ended up really loving it and really loving the rowing coaches and the rowing team that was there, which was yeah. a big part of my college experience. So I ended up going to Dartmouth. Um, I applied early decision and then ended up going there. Um, yep. I, my plan, I'm a big planner Um, but my plan for my first year was to just do classes that I was interested in and then sit down with myself at the end of the first year and, and see what I wanted to major in from the classes that I took. Um, so I really just explored things my first year. Um, I will say my first year was pretty tough, uh, academically. I, what I felt like in high school, I was the smartest kid in the class pretty often. Yeah. And it, things just kind of came easy. Yeah. But then when I went to college, like there was, I was not, (laughs) I was very clearly like struggling to keep on top of assignments. Essays were longer than anything I've ever written in my life. Like my first year writing course was 15 pages essays due every single week. Um, and that was a lot on top of 20 plus hours of varsity rowing, which the rowing and that time commitment was the same as it was in high school, but the work required so much more. And I feel like I worked with all of the resources that were available at Dartmouth, like the writing tutors and things like that. Yep. And it just felt like it didn't, wasn't clicking. Um, but I just really leaned on my professors and Dartmouth is one of the reasons why I picked it um, is it's a place where I have had only three classes that were larger than 12, 15 people. Wow, amazing. Um, and so our professors knew us really well and knew our strong suits and our weaknesses. And so I ended up getting very close with my first year writing professor. Um, we ended up getting coffee once a week. And then once a term thereafter till I graduated and she just was so instrumental in making me feel like I could do this and I could write better and identifying what I needed to do better. Okay, Um, great. So it was a, uh, I was an adjustment to the academics, but everything else was truly perfect. I couldn't have picked a better school. Um, I ended up re-looking at my classes Uh, my sophomore year and recognizing that I had already taken like half of what I needed to graduate in sociology. So I majored in sociology. I also had to take, you have to take a language at Dartmouth. Okay. Um, And so I took Italian was not great. My first (laughs) class of Italian, you have to take three classes to qualify for study abroad Okay. Um, and that's the reason I took it. I wanted to study abroad in Italy. Yeah, um, that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, so I took uh, my first class, didn't go that well, but typical me, I was like, great, so I'm not going to be bad at something. So I have to take a second class. Like, I just can't be bad at something. It's like, <laughs> I'm not going to allow myself to do that. Okay. So yeah. took a second class, did much better, and again, leaned on my professors, and then ended up minoring in Italian after coming back from Italy. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I did that. And that was, I, Dartmouth doesn't have a lot of, uh, my, my boyfriend went to Wharton. All of his majors were very easily transferable to a job interview. Yeah. Um, Dartmouth has less of that and they have econ, they have math, but they don't have any, like they don't have marketing and business. Yeah. Um, so but I felt like sociology was actually pretty easily transferable to uh, right. uh, uh, marketing, you know, knowing how people work and what, what makes them do things. That's Absolutely. Exactly what I need to know for marketing. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it ended up being a, a really amazing college experience for 
both the rowing and, and just everything else. Oh, that is fantastic. I love hearing about your journey and now you're at Microsoft. And so as you look back, what I'd love before you have to hop off, I'd love to hear what advice would you give to a younger student, say early in high school or even a senior, you know, about to a rising senior about to apply, what advice would you give? I think really thinking about it, it's really easy to think about the statistics of the school. It's really easy to think about, yeah. oh, I am in the top 3% if I get into Harvard. I'm in the top whatever. It's re- yeah. also, I have Asian grandparents and it's also yeah. really easy to think about, you know, my grandma really loves, would love to say that she has a granddaughter at Harvard. <laughs> right. Um, but it's about you and college mm-hmm. I've realized so much you, you become kind of like yourself, you become like an adult in college and it shapes a lot about who you are. And so you really have to choose a school that's going to allow you to do the exploration in yourself, in your academics um, and in your thinking that allows you to do that. And so it was really special for me and, and important for me to think about when I was thinking about schools to think yeah. about what my week would look like. Yeah. Would I have time to hang out with friends? Would I have rowing? Would I, you know, things like that. Yeah. And to really meet the people that were there and see yeah. like what they, what their core values were. And I feel like all of my professors were like, we just love what we do and really love teaching. And we yeah. just want you to learn. And that's what I needed in that area. Mm-hmm. For my rowing team, they had set the values as, family first, academic second, beautiful. rowing third. And that's exactly my, my wow. set of values. Yeah, that's so beautiful. It was very much, I found a lot of family at Dartmouth and I could yeah. see that in the admissions process. Beautiful. Um, and I found a lot of support that I didn't know I would need, but obviously needed. Yeah. Um, and I think I, I truly wouldn't be the person I am today if I had gone to another school. That's a beautiful comment. Um, yeah. It's very connected to what Jocelyn was saying about match, you know, that mm-hmm. really wanting to make sure that it's not about the name, the name of courses, you know, it's like the prize or whatever we all yeah. hope for, but it's really much more about, about the process and, and figuring out the good match. And that's similar to William, for your experience, you got into CMU, which was an absolute reach school for you, but you decided it wasn't the right fit. You wanted to go to uh, to, and I'm forgetting the name of the college, Imperial at London. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Imperial College. And that that was the perfect fit. So we, we were focused on fit just as much as we were focused on what's, you know, what are some really great colleges where you're going to get a great education, but what matches you? And I love what you just said, Avery, about that, that um, that it was about family because family was, I mean, that was a huge piece of what we talked about is how, what your family mm. meant to you and how influential they were and helping you develop your leadership. That's really beautiful. Yeah. And, and I think, I think yeah. Dartmouth's like alumni network, like we had to yeah. wear the Dartmouth bound shirts when we went to the flying program. And I yeah. met six people at the airport. Oh, are you going to Dartmouth? Let me tell you about my experience. I graduated oh. in 1973 and I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> wow. So that was the that interconnectedness. Family too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Beautiful. Is there, oh, you got to go. I just realized you got to, I was going to ask you one more question, but thank you so much for being here with us, Avery. It's such a delight to have you. Thank you guys. About your journey. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, great. Well, um, I'd love to check in with you, William, hear a little bit about what your college experience has been like. You have an unusual uh, uh, time frame. You really just sped through your, your undergrad and your graduate now. Tell us a little bit about your college experience. Yeah, so uh, as you have mentioned, I got into CMU and Imperial College. Well, those were two of my major choices when I was receiving my offers. Yeah. And I actually, I actually already deposited like I think five hundred dollars for CMU, and then at the last minute, I changed it to Imperial College. Yeah. Um, because I think I just think Imperial College is a better fit for me in the UK. Uh, we all know that CMU has a very good um, CS program, and in fact, 
it has a very strong program in applied math as well. Yeah. However, I felt like my interests are in the pure side of mathematics, in the yeah. more theoretical and more um, pure side of mathematics. So um, I feel like um, Imperial College has more pure mathematicians that I'd, I'd love to work with in the future. And especially there were some number theorists that were young, uh, energetic, active. Uh, they're posting papers, uh, getting their yeah. works. So I really loved I, I really would love to work with them in the college. And in fact, one of the professors actually led a research project of me <clears throat> in my uh, second year, I think. Second year. Yeah. He actually led a research project of, my, of mine, which was very helpful. I learned a lot from him. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I really think college is a platform rather than uh, a school. It yeah. provides a lot right. of resources. Uh, the professors are resources, um, the yeah. lectures are resources, and there are also uh, networkings that you should uh, approach to, and there are all kinds of resources that you need to uh, take, uh, get, take use of. Yeah, beautiful. So, um, yeah, yeah, so choosing the right fit is very important. I feel like yeah. um, in, at, Imperial, at Imperial, I received a very rigorous mathematical trainings, yeah. um, especially in the UK, I didn't have to take um, a lot of literature or uh, history classes I could really focus <laughs> I could really focus on mathematical courses I took like eight courses per year wow. all in mathematics oh, so that's wow. yeah that's why I uh, completed undergrads in three years um, yeah. although that's mo what most UK schools are like but three years times eight that's like 24 25 courses in pure mathematics which is a lot and very very um, rigorous yes so um, I think for someone who is very dedicated in a subject yeah uh, in your college you should really choose your um, courses accordingly um, yeah. like you know uh, choose a lot of courses that can help you in your major because you are so dedicated yeah, and also that's really uh, besides, cool yeah uh, besides academia I also continued some of my scores uh, right. especially especially volleyball uh, I didn't play so much soccer anymore because it okay. was quite hard to find a real grass uh, okay. field, <laughs> soccer field in London you know yeah, yeah, <laughs> the, sure. the lands are so so expensive so that uh, you it's really hard to find a real grass soccer field yeah. and I really don't like artificial grass fields I just can't accept it I've been playing on <laughs> real grass for four years and now you're telling me to play on artificial grass Turf, yeah just, yeah that's just terrible that's not yeah. acceptable <laughs> so yeah I just yeah. didn't play so much soccer after that and yeah. also I was playing at um, varsity level of yeah. uh, volleyball although it's yeah. not as competitive as NCAA it was right. still it still takes a lot it takes up some time you know we have sure. Uh, I think four or five trainings per, per week. And we have also wow. games every week. Yeah. Uh, we receive some national champions, actually. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Our, our school yeah. was pretty strong. I had a lot of very good teammates. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I played volleyball. And if I don't even really remember, but I remember telling you about some, some of my conflicts with my soccer coach. Oh, I remember uh, very vividly. Yeah, yes, yeah. Too, we yeah. wrote a beautiful essay about that. Yeah, in fact, I encountered similar things in college. Interesting, and, yeah. And yeah, and this time uh, I chose to deal, deal with it differently and things come out much better. Interesting. Uh, what yeah, did you do differently? I, what, what, what would you say? Because in high school, it was... I, I remember the story was you came from, you had come from China and you felt like you were a strong player there. And then you came to the school and you're like, okay, I'm going to be one of the best. And then you realized, oh, I'm, I'm not one of the best. And I actually have to work at this. And that created some conflict between you and your coach. Yes. Yes. Especially during high school, I feel like, oh, I, I'm scoring a lot, right? I'm breaking the school record, but yeah. you're not, you're not, you're not putting me into uh, the starting 11. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, right yeah. um so this time similar things happen uh i'm like a, a very strong attacker in the team yeah. but he's not putting me on for the starting for, for the starting uh, formation uh yeah. i was very confused so this time what i did differently is i had a private conversation with him and actually politely asked him uh what do you think i am missing 
and uh, he, 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 yeah, he just told me that I don't think your defense is strong enough. And plus, yeah. I have to give the senior players more time. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, he just told me about that. And I accepted yeah. it because uh, after he pointed it out and he, uh, during the next few trainings, we did some defense practice and I realized, oh yeah, he, he's right. Uh, I didn't <laughs> realize that my defense is not, it's not good enough. I need to improve yeah. on my defense. Yeah. So, uh, so I accepted the fact that I'm not there yet. Yeah. Uh, I spent some time practicing my defense as well as my uh, imp continuing improving my attacks. Cool. And then the next year, the next year he he was like, "Oh, see, you are much better now, and I'm putting you on <laughs> for the starting for, for the starting six. Fantastic. And so yeah, things things turned out fine. Uh, we didn't have like struggles with each other. We didn't have conflicts. Beautiful. And playing all of us, we received champions. I actually even got MVP during one of the cup, of, a cup finals. That's so beautiful. yes, thank you. Yeah. So you see, like same things happen, and I dealt with it differently. And yeah. How do you think I'm that writing? Out. Yeah. How do you think that writing about that that experience early in high school with your soccer um, coach? How do you think that influenced your dealing with this differently in college? Yeah, yeah. So uh, if I we haven't talked about it, if we haven't written about it, yeah. then these things would remain to be a you know. I every time I think about it, I would only have anger. You know, yes. I won't think about why he didn't put me on or what I could have done better right. to to avoid the conflicts. I would only be angry, saying, "Oh, uh, hey, he didn't put me on. He doesn't." He just doesn't like me, which is unfair, yeah, right? Yeah. And if I encounter the same thing again, I still don't know how to deal with it. I still, I would probably still have the same problems and um, yeah. still get, you know, get get a really bad relationship with my coach, which is definitely not good for a player, right? Right. Uh, yeah, but we talked about it, and though when we were talking about it and writing about it, I was still quite pissed i still didn't <laughs> understand why he didn't put me on but yeah by writing about it and talking about it i first of all released some of my anger yeah uh, so fun. that the thing is not just emotional for me yeah. uh, i get to think about it and be more right. rational about about yeah, yeah. others yeah. opinions so Beautiful. although Beautiful. i probably still didn't have a clear idea by that time by by when i was in high school yeah. about why he did that or what I could have done better when the second when the thing happened the second time I just suddenly realized that you know yeah. I, I can do this in another way yes. and receive a better result why shouldn't I do it so yeah that's so yeah, empowering yeah. and very just very cool to see how when we do an in-depth writing process it's so much bigger than the application yeah. it's it, it allows definitely. insight into yourself yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's much more than just the application itself. It, yeah. it helps me. It helps me in the future events yeah. as well. Yeah. And so now here you are, you're about to wrap up your, not just your undergrad in three years, but your graduate degree in a year. Wow. That's yeah. incredible that you were able to do that so quickly. What, what would you say helped you fly through your program like that? Program. Well, yeah. So, uh, I have just I have mentioned at the uh, earlier that I was quite dedicated and I chose um, mostly courses that are in my field. Uh, of course, I still chose some courses out of interest that were not contributing to my major. Sure. But sure. I, I spent a lot of time in the field that I wanted to work with, and then I uh, I I even uh, chose a more specific field of mathematics that I wanted to work with so that I could yeah. approach to professors in this field and mm. um, also professors actually from from other schools in this field uh, to talk with them you know email them saying that oh I really like your uh, papers on um, blah 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 and yeah I think yeah. I, I think this you know sharing some of my opinions with him and talking with him so uh, being very dedicated really helped me to uh, speed things up yeah. and yeah. to be to, to start my PhD application very early as well yeah. because yeah. I started connecting with professors from other schools I it was easier for me to just approach to them and ask hey uh, are you still looking for a PhD student student yeah. <clears throat> for next year um, so yeah um, 
having a clear goal. I, I'm not saying that you have to have a very clear goal before you get into college, but yeah. once you but once you do, um, you can focus on your course uh, on your major uh, with a lot efficiency. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I think yeah. that was uh, that was a big piece of our work together. I think Jocelyn, Alex, for you too, the sense that Carolyn, you already had us. You know, you already knew when we were working together. You already knew where you the direction you wanted to go. But for each of us, we were Jocelyn, Alex, William. We were working together to figure out the direction. I mean, you already knew William that you were interested in mathematics. But when we talked to, even a couple of years ago, you said our conversations helped you get so even more clear about, yes, it's pure math. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, before our talk, I think my love for math is vague. I would say uh -huh. that. It's like, yeah. oh, I love math. Yeah. But why? Um, do yeah. I really love that? It's, it's more like a very superficial yeah. uh, expression. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I love math. Yeah. But I didn't go into it, into depth of why I love about math, what I love yeah. about math. Yeah. Um, and also, like I said, um, our time uh, during our talk, it, it gave me some time as well. It gave me time to really double check with myself if I really love this subject. Yes. I think this is also very important. And yeah. I think that was reflected in the paper, it, it reflected in the um, in our, in our essay. I was saying, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. why I, yeah, that's why I'm still using uh, a part of it in my other applications because I, I think you know, love didn't change, right? Yes. Why should I change my pieces? You're right, exactly. You can just build yeah. on that. Beautiful. So yeah. as you look back on your younger self, say beginning of high school and then even beginning of admissions process or entering college, what would you say? You know, what advice would you give to yourself? Yeah, uh, so I would say specifying one field is definitely good, but try to be, uh, try, try, try to also try, try other fields, you know, um, yeah. at least put in more efforts in the fields that you think you are not good at, instead mm. of just, instead of just accepting that I'm not good at it. Um, yeah, um, and also I think uh, what, what, one what very important thing is, I thought that academia was a what was a few, uh, was a academia is a place that you work as a person you ask yourself. You don't work with others, and that's definitely wrong. Yeah. So I didn't yeah. realize that when I was in high school, but that becomes much more clear in college. In academia, net, networking is still very important. You have to talk with people. You have to communicate with your peers right. and your your uh, teachers to 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 do research to improve on yourself so yeah i would definitely encourage myself to be more open and talking talk to uh, to to peers uh especially on um, mathematical ideas and uh, their opinions on you know it doesn't have to be like very specific but just yeah. math probably just, yeah. just talking to people and networking expanding beyond just this is my classes these are my yes. mates yeah yeah, yeah. beautiful yeah. that's really yeah. cool yeah is there anything else you'd add to that uh no that's about it I think. yeah beautiful thank you so much for sharing that alex no let's, problem let's go to you and let's talk about you, how your college experience has been what's unfolded for you yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um so yeah i mentioned before that it took me a bit to like land what like my uh, what i'm like doing right now my major of um computer science and design um so i i went into northeastern and started with doing business um it was right. i think i started that because i didn't know i wanted to study um yeah. so i kind of just like chose that and i'd be like you know yeah maybe i'll go into entrepreneurship or something but yeah, yeah we I, did a lot of study on entrepreneurship programs yeah that seemed like connected to what you'd been doing with design and design thinking and your work with your dad's company and your humans of you know, weston it was all sort of had this quality of going out and just creating and right. you know, entrepreneurship right. seemed like it made sense at the time yeah right. so then what happens yeah so uh i basically spent kind of a year doing um, business 
Um, and then I just like didn't really, I just couldn't really enjoy it, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, I guess I, I didn't learn that much of entrepreneurship, but it was like, cause I had to go through all like the intro. Oh, business. those intro courses in business are pretty. Yeah. And then <laughs> I just, yeah, yeah. I just got kind of tired. And then what I realized was I did graphic design, like all throughout high school. Yeah. And I went to design a few design thinking, like summer programs, which yes. I really like. And yeah. I, I like, I was like, I realized like not doing them for a year. I realized how much I missed them missed actually. That. So right. I real yes, yeah, so I think that's where I realized I really actually like enjoyed graphic design. I didn't realize I, how much I liked it when I was like doing it. And then until yeah. I like stopped doing it, I realized how much I missed it. So Very um, cool. that's how I yeah. kind of, I was like, damn, I really wanted uh, to like, so yeah, do design again. And then yeah. I ended up changing to CS. I was still like debating. I was like, I can kind of still want to do like something else because yeah. so not sure yeah exactly and I'm just like I kind of want to just learn a bit more uh just of other um like majors and stuff so yeah um and then I just yeah I did like I talked with my parents and then just my friends and my teachers are like hey you think I, I'll be you know good in CS and my you know my friends are like yeah you you can probably handle it it's like it's fine and then my parents <laughs> awesome. also thought it was a good idea yeah I thought I did some research too I thought like the combination of the two would be pretty good for uh, sure pretty good match too absolutely um so yeah so I ended up just uh, kind of changing um out of business into design and then I kind of uh, or, or you know I'm business into CS and I kind of did it in a way where like if, if things didn't work out I would I could always just minor them and yeah. then kind of and yeah so I kind of so for a long time I was <laughs> taking like very intro courses and then like very carefully like one step at a time because I, yeah I still wasn't sure and then the yeah. way I approach it was like if I didn't like it it'll still work towards my minor so you know I, I would be all right and didn't like waste that much time yeah, but yeah. good um yeah. but yeah so eventually I landed up on CS and design yeah um and then I've basically I have like two more like actual CS classes that I need to wow. take so I'm almost done with CS and I'm yeah. basically done with like the, the my design concentration stuff and I have some, okay. some basic class to like take so yeah. it, it was kind of where I took them kind of a bit out of order but you sure right now yeah I feel like I realized I really do des uh, enjoy design a lot more so I'm concentrating yes. in graphic design but I really also want to learn more about um, like user experience and user interface but Fantastic. I think it was still good I went to CS because I think it it is really a good combination and then it's yeah. helped me it looks like you know it's like nice on resume and then I think I'm pretty sure it helped me a lot um, getting my co-op too right absolutely just being able to understand and then since yep. as a designer a lot of your job is to like talk to other people and then like like find out what they need and you know like yeah make it for them so I think yeah. understanding um this field does the feel as yes was pretty helpful too so that's very yeah. cool to hear how it all un uh, <laughs> unfolded yeah. and evolved for you and is evolving that's really exciting so when you look back on your you know say freshman self and then or you know senior year self and now you know entering mm -hmm. and then entering college what advice would you give to your younger self I think I wish I started like exploring a bit earlier I guess okay. um I know I started doing you know like doing more stuff with you but I yep. still didn't really have a good idea I'd say like it took me like a good like one and a half years in college to really settle down which I feel like yes. could have been time you know spent better or you know sure. learn like stuff that I actually like wanted to learn but it's still good I, I like I, I am like happy now but I just thought yeah, uh, yeah I just like really didn't do much in high school and I thought <laughs> um I think I wish I just went I guess just explored more stuff yeah like yeah um, design and like maybe I didn't really understood that I liked it like you know I, I had fun doing design right. in high school but I didn't know like I really really liked it so I guess I yeah. get it yeah. What do you think? So, so it's sort of easy to give ourselves younger selves advice, but if we think about like if if your younger self were really sitting here and you mm -hmm. were like, okay, I re you really should, you know, be great, not should, no shoulds, but right. it would be great to have you explore more early. What do you think would actually have helped you do that? Because that's the other piece is it's great to know. Oh, that would have been good. But what are the pieces that would have been good to have in place that would help you do that? Yeah, I think, I think. Um having I think having like people that you or work that you look up to or you find like yeah. inspiring is good um yeah. and then also just um like 
just start uh just, just making more stuff I guess I wish I like kind of making like, more I love yeah that. yeah I wish I started like doing more stuff with like um illustrator and stuff which is like the the okay. majority of tools you do in design because I think yeah. like I would have yeah I think yeah I would have not been like I feel like I would have been reluctant to do it but I feel like after you start doing something like like they say like starting is like the hardest part I feel like so I yeah, think I should have yeah. I wish I like started just like maybe someone pushed me to start a bit earlier and then I would have realized yeah. or just start making more um creating. and then I love yeah that. yeah creating more so, yes yeah. beautiful that's amazing advice thank you so much Alex anything you want to add to that um yeah I just I guess I wished high school was more about kind of like helping you like learn what you want to do I guess <laughs> I know yeah. it's not like that is it yeah, <laughs> yeah and this so. is why we have to go outside of our schools because our schools are great at preparing us academically but no, but not socially or even the sense of you know how you take your learning beyond the classroom right. Um, right. and that's a piece where you know I think that's a great advice to to look to people you look up to and then just start creating because that is leadership right is creating is leadership and that, you know, knowing, go if you had gone into college knowing, ah, oh, I really love this and I want to do more with this, it might have made your path, you know, would have made your path, you know, more um, straightforward. And that is also the purpose of college, <laughs> to try things too. Right. Yeah, right. exactly. Beautiful. Thank you, Alex. Jocelyn, let's go to you. Tell us a little bit about, you've just gone through your first year of college at Wellesley. Tell us a little bit about what that this year has, how it's unfolded for you and maybe what advice you would give your, to your younger self, you know, freshman year of high school, going into college, all of that. Okay, I always get like intimidated by that question. Like, what <laughs> advice would you give me? <laughs> right, because right. I feel like, oh, I don't know what to say. But um, <laughs> I think I'm like the first year. So I, I, I like, I, I don't have a lot of, um, like I haven't had that long of an experience so I think for sure. me I'm still in the early stage of um exploring yes. and I don't know I think the society like we always put a, the pressure on ourselves that like oh you need to find a passion and like you really need to quote-unquote like what you do yeah. so for a long time I've been kind of questioning I was like what does that really mean right like I will right. talk to professors I was like I was like I don't know what that means like, uh, yeah. like how would I know if I like something like I can like something periodically but then once it gets hard and there are times where I get frustrated right like nice. does that still mean that I, I like this thing or like yes. what, what does it mean that I love um so Great I think I struggled with, with that for um for a while but then um and another thing like I already said was econ but I think I've decided that like econ is not for me yeah um, and um so right now if I have to say what I want to do for mm. the future I think I might want to go down the architecture route and maybe urban planning because I I, I like I like the idea of planning something that subconsciously you kind of tweak people's behavior if that makes sense so like very like, cool yeah but I think this summer like I I, I have to do more research about like what's what are people's like um into this because this idea right. and this interest is is really new so yeah yeah uh, part of me is scared that like once I go down this route I might <laughs> the, the interest might fade but um <laughs> but I, yeah I think for me like I I'm not someone who's really clear cut and I don't yeah. quote unquote like I'm not really determined of like okay this is like what I like and this is what I want to do so um, I did take a really wide ver a variety of um, classes this year to yeah. the point where like at Wellesley you, ha you have um, distribution requirements so basically you've got to hit different classes certain amount in different areas like right. I'm like pretty close to being done like I have three more classes and I like I hit wow. so I, I really took a wide variety of classes I took a class on like religion art history um, yeah econ math cs oh and i took a class on like poverty and economic security oh wow that was at um mit so i think that was right. interesting because it filled in a lot of the gap that i had yeah. in understanding the american system 
system, if that makes sense, because I was yeah. an immigrant. So like I, a lot of it about like, yeah, I think it was just a really different way of thinking about it. And yeah. just like the first time I started to think about policy and I, yeah. I, I, I have to say like, it's so much more complicated than I thought. And a lot of times right. you will think from numbers, like, oh, you will get this result, but from history, like actually like you don't get, so it's really complicated, but I think that's where the shifts start to happen because that class was under the urban planning department there. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I don't, in terms of advice, I, 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 I don't know. I don't really know what to say in terms of advice. Like, I, I feel like I still don't know that much. So, well, you know, if, if I was going to jump in and give you advice or give your younger self advice, I would say, just follow the path the way you did. You, you entered this deeply exploratory path with me, probably the deepest of all of you here. Cause we had the most time mm -hmm. to work together. <clears throat> and, um, and we were we were willing to let things be really messy and not oh, necessarily yeah. know yeah. like like you're saying I'm I'm not someone who like you know William was so clear like this is what I want to do Carolyn you've been so clear this is what I want to do this is who I am but for a lot of students more like Alex you know and and Jocelyn the two of you are more like let's see right and and there is room for both styles right. Mm -hmm and college is meant to be a place of exploration and it can also be a place to just hone those interests more and more and more the way carolyn and william you've done right um and we'll get to you carolyn in a minute but uh i think that's that's really was your that was a big stretch for you and your mom right like your mom loves certainty and let's get clear and what's the plan right and we always had an eye towards this is going to be supportive to you as you do the admissions process and more important supportive to you personally and your growth and getting to know what you're interested in but it, it wasn't like oh we figured it out by the time you applied to college it was like we had these experiences and we got to make sense of them together but it wasn't like okay now i know right it yeah was, I, I think maybe this is just mm -hmm. really like who i am because i think yeah. ultimately whatever i choose i will always have like doubts in my mind that like this yeah. is really what you want to do so i guess part of you just have to accept that and um just and I will say that the certainty comes as the more the more clarity you get as you explore about oh this is where I want to put my time and my energy and you know this will be my major and then maybe I'll go to graduate school for this thing that right. the, the passion and the certainty comes with experience but mm. I think the willingness to be in the uncertainty is the thing that that allows us to get to the certainty we can't because sometimes we want to lock in, right? I know Alex, when we worked together, it was like, oh, let's lock in, let's get a clear, you know, a clarity of direction. And we did get a direction, but it wasn't set in stone, right? And, th and there can be discomfort with that, especially with the parents, right? Because they want to know what the plan is, right? And they want that certainty, right? And, and that's not, that's not really the process, is it? A lot, uh, not necessarily, it, it, like, sometimes it is, and for you, it, it wasn't. Right. Yeah. So tr I think it's a lot about trusting yourself that even if you don't know exactly what you're going to do, trusting that you are on the path to figuring it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that yeah. feel like that <laughs> makes sense? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think it's just like a, um, a big, pr not pressure, but kind of like something that I struggled this year was that yeah. like part of me want to be like unique like I don't want to do something a lot of people do but then yeah. also like you see so many people going to econ or CS and you're like hmm, maybe there's something really there like there right be so, so so mm -hmm. and then there's also the, fun, the, the the thing about like is it like getting jobs and you know like pays and is and all of those but mm -hmm. I kind of landed to the argument that like whatever what you do is going to be competitive I think that's another thing I learned in college like mm -hmm. I think we're in high school you're always like so ambitious right like you're like oh do 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 and then you can see the end goal but yeah. now college like I think everyone like including friends around me oh like kind of entered this phase about like okay like it's a really competitive world so you kind of just have to shift your standards of how you measure your own success and like 
so it's yeah so i think now we're less ambitious and like quote unquote like perfectionist and it's more about like interesting yeah like accepting and yeah i think that's another thing like i did not realize how competitive <laughs> it is and it's okay. like so hard yeah so, oh no, it's yeah i think it's it's, it's no it's about- it's even more i mean and where you went to sc- high school was very competitive but right. you're saying like this is the next level yeah right and yeah. I, I think that's something that i see in like for like a lot of people who enter college which is yeah. um really interesting yeah. okay yeah yeah and so what you're saying is you know we went in with sort of these perfectionists you know we got to get the perfect grades and you know do all the right stuff and what you're saying now is I want to accept where I am, my strengths and my weaknesses, build on my strengths and not hyper-focus on what I'm not great at, something like that. Yeah, I think a lot of people um, came into college with like a really good plan, like especially yeah. for a lot of people with pre-med and they like, that's like a really clear track, right? But, yep. um, but I, think- I was pre-med. <laughs> I was pre-med at Wellesley and I couldn't get through calculus. I tried twice and I was like, okay, I'm going to be an English major. And that's how I ended up doing all this work with you guys. It's just, it was a natural extension in the same way that Avery studied sociology and now she's in marketing at Microsoft. It's that's yeah. The it's very easy to go in and think, you know what you're going to do. And then life takes you in a different direction. That's how we respond. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what you're saying is how you're noticing how you and your, your peers are responding to we thought we were doing this and oh maybe we're actually doing this other thing over here and being okay with that yeah celebrating that that process that uncertainty very cool is there anything you would add to that Hmm. Uh, no if I think of something I'll come back yeah very cool thank you well Carolyn it's really wonderful to have you here as someone who did a a different experience with the transfer application and I'd love to know you've talked a little bit about you know the admissions process and the essays and the advice you would give to your younger self or to younger students is there anything you would add in terms of the college experience itself in terms of the transfer process what what advice would you give to someone younger than you who might be in a similar experience um i i honestly don't know because part of me what is like i i should i should have i should have tried earlier because now i'm like trying to cram the last two years into the last two years and not take an extra semester um but also part of me is like like i gave northeastern its fair shot and to see like, do will I am can I can I like do well here? Um, so what I would it, it's hard to balance those two things like looking at it after the fact. So like, I would definitely say um, I don't don't go into a co- your college like I. Hmm. I would like for me is don't go in like knowing like okay I want to get out of here like that's that's not a good way to go like you're not gonna if you if you go in thinking like I want to get out of here then you're not going to enjoy your time like give like go in with an open mind and like give wherever you are a fair shot before you you really decide like okay I don't like it here I'm getting out that's a great that's great advice did you go in feeling like oh yeah I want it out right right away or was it different for you uh, I, I will say I went in a little bit, like, I'm not entirely happy, um, because the, I mean, it was more of the, like, I didn't really get to apply, like, put in my applications the way I wanted to, so I felt that the results weren't entirely reflective of, like, like, who I was, so where I got in wasn't like wasn't really fully like things that fit me if that makes sense so there was a little bit coming in like "Mm, I'm not entirely I'm not entirely happy but like I also wanted to keep keep it keep myself open like Northeastern is a very good school I'll give it a try um yeah um Jocelyn on the side asked me earlier if she thought grades like my college versus high school grades were more like more of an influence on whether like of like where I got in, um, 
I see online that college grades have a greater influence, but also I've been very consistent between like high school grades and testing and college grades. So I, I can't actually speak to that, um, but yeah. Yeah, that, that's really interesting. And so when you, once you transferred to Cornell, I know you didn't have, because you were in a, a COVID <laughs> pandemic year, it was a strange transition to your new college at Cornell what but academically did it has it felt like a better fit for you are you getting what you really wanted and more of the theory yeah yeah it's definitely Cornell has definitely like gotten to that a lot more yeah like I, I feel better about it and like it's been more of a challenge to me which I like I kind of needed yeah so what what I'm hearing you say is you gave the best shot that you could at Northeastern and then you felt like you know what I actually really do want to transfer. I want this, I want a different experience. And you got clear about what you wanted and why it wasn't just like, oh, Northeastern in general isn't the place. It was like, oh, I want this theory. I want this specific experience that I could get at a different kind of school. And that, that drove the decision rather than just more frustration. Yeah. Does that sound true? Yeah. Beautiful. Like, is there any other advice you would give to your younger self, like either in high school or entering college or in college? Um, well, going back to you're probably of helicopter parents um, for, to people, students in general, like definitely like take the time to like, it, it's, pro- it's very much like the personal growth, like, like find yourself thing, but like, find out who you are when your pa- when your parents aren't watching over your shoulder because that's that's going to be like who that's really closer to who you are um cuz like you're 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 going to do a lot of things to try and like keep your parents happy so like good grades do the sport like um do whatever extracurriculars and like a, but like you're not going to do all of those when your parents aren't there like behind you so just like I'm not saying you don't have, like, you shouldn't do them. Like, sometimes it's your parents push you to do things that are, like, good because, like, to just explore a bit. But, like, at a certain point, you have to really look at, like, okay, which things do I actually want to do? Yeah, and that, and that, and so college has become more of that opportunity for you to, to really get clear. Yeah, beautiful. Very cool. Yeah, Jocelyn, go ahead. No, I, I just want to say, like, part of me actually, I, I wonder about this, like, I, I feel like the college application itself, like, you're probably 17 or 18, something, like, when you, yeah. I, I just think it's really hard for, like, I don't think that's the age where <laughs> you, sh- you should be asked, like, what do you want to do in life, and then, and I think with me, like, even the Wells is still really close, um, from home, I was able to get the distance that I, um, that I wanted, which was the, like, o- like the only thing I did, I, I was, I didn't want to go to Wellesley. It was just, I think it was too close. And I thought my mom can still like hover over me, but actually that, like that didn't happen. And so I think that might be why that in college, we're able to quote unquote, know, our, know ourselves better or yeah, um, because you don't have the presence of your your parents actually in proximity with you. So yeah, um, so really the empowered place to be able to say, well, what am I genuinely interested in here? Right, what and I choose on my own. Yeah, yeah, and also like just for people who are watching, like the transfer is always an option. So I think sometimes, yeah. like, and I think. Like, <laughs> exactly like Caroline's story like it makes a lot of sense like it's a really convincing yeah. story so I think sometimes you don't need like quote unquote before it might be like GPAs and stuff but I think a lot of the transfer applications are more about the story and you know clearly the reason why so you're really like yeah. determined so, yeah absolutely yeah. yeah very cool yeah so so you all thank you all so much for being with us today I just wanted to ask one last question and feel free to just jump in and is there, a, is there anything that surprised you about your college experience or anything, you know, you feel like younger students should know, uh, you know, or you wish you had known, um, you know, before all of this? Oh, I, um, I have, I have an answer. I think yeah. the first thing is diversity, like really people's backgrounds. And yeah. um, so I think before you're like, oh, I sent in my application, right? There must be a lot of people that are really like 
similar to me like even though there are but with the people that I was exposed to the the amount of people's backgrounds in the schools that they went to was so different that I was like okay that makes sense maybe like you really don't know how the process works like you don't know kind of like who they choose or Or why yeah I think that was something that that really shocked me and I and and I, I and I think I see the value in diversity now than like in compared to high school so yeah very cool yeah very nice what else did you guys add? Yeah, yeah just to yeah. Uh, yeah, just to extend on um, Jocelyn's ideas. Like I, I got into math and I was expecting. Oh, your audio just went away for a second for some reason, William. Sorry. Maybe his phone froze for a moment. Can let's see if we can hear you. Try that again. I'm sorry, we lost you. That was important. <laughs> he froze. Maybe he can, if he, once he comes back, I'll see. Oh, we lost him. He'll come back. He'll just come right back in. Alex, is there anything you wanted to add? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I guess I feel like kind of what people said before, just like college allows you to be yourself. And then I feel like, by then you'll be I feel like it helps to be a lot more confident and then I guess just um like making more connections is very important I think I know it's like very I know it's very like touche people say all the time you know you got to join clubs and stuff but yeah um like yeah like I think you can just join the ones you like and then you don't have to force yourself to do extra just like yeah um yeah and then just you know just join the the clubs doesn't have to be like you know all academic focus we're like you know super fancy but I think right. just in general, getting to know more people is good. And then, yeah. So. Thank you, Alex. That's <laughs> great. Thank you, William. You're back. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> My Zoom just quit somehow. Oh, no so, worries. Uh, very open and rejoin the, the meeting. Great. So, yeah, I was just saying that I wanted to uh, extend on Jocelyn's. Uh, I, I, probably Alex already added something, but <laughs> I was going to continue with Jocelyn's idea. Like I was, I, I went into math major and I was expecting my peers to be choosing math major because they wanted to do math, they wanted to uh, study the subject. But it turns out that a lot of uh, my, my, my classmates chose math because it's just a very general subject. They, okay. they, uh, they didn't know what they wanted to do, so they just yeah. chose math. A lot yeah. of my classmates were like that. And I believe it's the same for some other majors, some, yeah. uh, some other majors that can be applied in many different fields. So um, the, th- the thing is, you, you have to, uh, there's nothing wrong with them. I think that's the totally, uh, totally right thing to do. Um, math is definitely a subject you can apply in a lot of things. A lot of them proceed into finance or uh, econ or some sure. other fields and they are very, being, being very successful. Some of them yeah. are working for uh, very famous banks. Some of them are right. proceeding to PhD in different fields. Right. So uh, just like Jocelyn said, uh, accept the diverse, diversity, even though you're probably exa- expecting them to be very much the same as you, um, it, they mostly likely won't be the same as you. So yeah. Uh, yeah. get to know others' ideas, why they are here, uh, what they are trying to get from this place and, you know, uh, get, get, get along with them. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it really helps. It really helps. That's connected to what Alex was saying too about you know just connecting with a lot of people and you know it, inviting that diversity of experience and diversity of community around you. That's beautiful. Um, I wanted to ask one last question. What, what I just came and and left me for a minute. Um, I, I think that that heart of oh yeah. What, so what I wanted to ask was. If you so, I love hearing about your college experience and that it's really opened a lot of self awareness and more confidence in your what you're interested in and having this ability to go explore without your parents saying, "Hey, try this or do this or be helicopter." Um, and then, um, <laughs> and then, uh, w- but what I'm wondering about is for students in high school what would you say to the students in high school who can't yet get to college and get that freedom and that exploration? How do we 
how would you do that? You know, at, at, in, at, in high school, you know, Carolyn in particular, you, you said, get a spine, you know, how do you do that with your parents when there's a lot of pressure from maybe your teachers, your guidance counselor, your parents, what would you say? Cause I think that's the high school students are going to feel like, oh, I want to be in college and do what you're doing, but they're not there yet. And so how do we, how do we not say, oh, just wait till you get to college. How do we, how would you help your high school self thrive? Do you think? Uh, so yeah, um, before we start with the actual qu answering this question, yeah. I'd like to briefly just talk about this freedom you, yeah. you were mentioning. Yeah. I think this freedom is not what a lot of high school students are expecting. Okay. Uh, it's not yeah. like total freedom from everything. <laughs> right. I, like, like, like I've mentioned, university or college is like a platform. It, it's not, it's not a school, technically speaking, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, there are still professors. There are still, uh, you, you probably have an advisor and you know, some other teachers that help you along the road. But you have to, you have to be able to make decisions yourself. You have to know um, things that you want to try. You, know, you, you don't have to have a specific major, but you have to have an idea what you want to try, right? So you have to make a lot of choices you have to get access to the resources yourself you have to approach to them so that's what i think this freedom is it's like you have the freedom to try things to uh to access the resources to talk with uh different people to network with different people instead of just like total freedom oh i'm just going there and i'm, to I'm finally free from the parents uh, that's right. just a, yeah. a, one right. very small aspect of this freedom because i'm yeah. saying this because for for a very short time i was in that situation i was like oh okay yeah i'm just so free you know yeah but i just, just soon very soon realized that this freedom was given to me because i need to uh, it's given to me so that i can utilize the resources provided by my school uh, instead cool. of yeah for yeah. me to chill yeah, I love fun. that. Yeah, that's awesome. So what would you say to your, your high school self, you know, because your house, high school self thought, oh, I can have so much freedom when I get to college and, and maybe felt a little, you know, bound or, un, you know, fettered in some way. What, so how, how would you, if you could go back, if you would change anything, what would you say to your younger self to create some of that? Yeah, yeah. I think in the same sense of freedom, I think high school students can also experience this, experience that freedom, yeah. even if it's in high school. Yeah. Like there are professors, right? So there are similarly there are teachers. You still have the freedom to approach to them and ask them for opportunities, Beautiful. right? And uh, there are still a lot of things you can try, um, right? In, in, yeah. in university, you probably try different courses, different majors. But in high school, you get to try different clubs, different yeah. sports, and also different courses as well, right? Yeah. So you have the same uh, freedom in high school, but probably you are uh, a little bit more restricted. Like you have to go back to dorm at 10 p.m. or, or 9 p.m., I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but in the sense of the actual freedom that universities provide you, you can already uh, get the sense of it in high school as long as you go yeah. to try it instead of just following the instructions by the, by, by the teachers, you know, yeah. uh, taking, taking the courses and finishing your homework. Uh, you have to select a club that oh, yeah. I'm just selecting one club to fulfill the requirements. Yeah, yeah, right. So if you, yeah, if you, if you jump out of these boundaries, if you jump out of these instructions and actually try things you want to try, uh, uh, yeah. search for opportunities, then you, you get the same freedom you get in universities. That, that's, that's my so opinion. That's so cool. For, I love for, that. So what I hear you saying is, freedom isn't something that's given to you it's something that you can create for yourself yeah definitely. you create it by by getting in touch with what you really want and going in and uh, alex said like go create something make something right yeah yeah that's yes. really cool i love that thank yeah. you so much yeah jocelyn i i think okay so my oh my god uh, mom's talking. Okay. Uh, okay. My thought, my thought is that like I first, I just want to acknowledge that high, like at least my high school experience was really hard. And I think yeah. when you like ask like, oh, what advice do you want to give? Like, I think part of me don't even kind of want to like look back to my high school experience just because of how stressful it was. Yeah. So I think, 
I might have like a kind of a pessimistic view, but I think high school experience is just hard. Like, I just think college is better. Like, it is <laughs> so yeah. you're at this like period in your life, you kind of just kind of like get through with it. But I, I know, Elizabeth, you always have like um different, like, I, I think you're brave in the sense that you always like, oh, we can like change it and stuff. But for me, like the system, I'm kind of like, I, I, I don't like... I don't think we can change it and you're a part of the system so you might as well just kind of have to <laughs> go through with it um so that's what I want to say first it's just that I think high school um it's just it, when you're at these very competitive high schools there's a tremendous amount of pressure it's true yeah and yeah. it's just it, it's just not and I think part of it is that like I'm in college, like I work hard, but it's because I know what I want, where I want to do this myself. But like in high school, it's always like, oh, my mom is, or we're feeling like, I don't know what I'm, why I have to do this. And yeah, I, I, I don't know why. And then I still yeah. have to do, and it just, I think that's a, a big thing. So maybe yeah. if you're lucky enough, you really know why you're doing it, maybe that will make the experience better. Well, but, I think that's what you're getting at is that was a lot of the work we did was trying to make sense of why you were doing what you're doing. And you had a lot of pressure from your mom to do certain things and to do them in a particular way or whatever, um, and to get certain results. And that, you know, and the combination of the intensity of the workload from your school and, and the pressure from your parents, you know, particularly your mom, definitely made that an, a very intense experience for you. Right. What we were always working on together is how how do we, how do we get you unstuck from the intensity of that and look for where you can create? And this is the, this was the whole four years that we did in our one-on-one -on -one work was how do we create and build on? And if it's not quite working, how do we shift and right. find what really is true for you? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think, I think that's, that's a good point, but, um, Another point I want to make is about the college application in itself. Like, yeah. I think, like, first I was, like, like I said, I was shocked about the diversity, but also there's just, like, things that I would never understand, like, how, like, well, legacy, you know, like, that's just yeah. something I do. So I think right. part of it, you just have to accept that, like, the family you come from, like, yeah. you know, it's, it, there are cer certain constraints and, sure. and it's not a lot about, like, I, I think the, um, uh, the the kind of like the Chinese way of looking at it is always like oh you can't change a system so you can only change yourself and by doing yeah. that is make your grades better and blah 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 but I think uh, right. part of me always just wish that like my mom would recognize that like legacy plays a role you know and there are other factors and race plays a role and like yeah. I don't she she was like so so like that's why people ask me about the college application I've been through it I'm still don't, I still don't really understand how it works and I feel like <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so, um, yes yeah I think that's just what I want to say I think for high school oh, I don't know it's just it's just so hard <laughs> you had a very intense experience so hard, with but, the uh, combination yeah yeah, yeah. But, but I think, I think what, you know, the, as I look back on, on how you changed and evolved and really came into your own so that you're in a position now where you can look and say, okay, how do I build off of these interests? And I became so passionate about sustainability. And now what's the, what's the right channel for me, to, you know, to focus on with that, that work that we did in those four years of high school, you know, in the first, you know, you were in eighth yeah. grade, when you first did the group program, you, it, it has allowed you to get that clarity. And, and I think if we were to go back and do it all over again, I don't know if there's a lot we could do differently, given the pressures of the family and, and the school system. But maybe what we would do is look for where we could create even more freedom. Yeah. Right? For you, like what William's saying, like, how do we create that? It's not given, right? It's, we create it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I want to say something. Oh, yeah. I, oh, we're losing you, Jocelyn. Oh, you're, let's see if it comes back. I'm going to mute her for a minute if I can. 
let's see. Uh, I'm going to put her in the waiting room and then see if that helps. Okay, hold on one second. Oh, Jocelyn. <laughs> that was another thing. Like, oh, oh no, wait, can you hear me? Hear me now? No, okay, come yes. back. Come back. We lost you entirely. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Let, let me get you. Again. Let me see. You're joining. Yeah. Okay. We lost her for a second. We'll get her back in one second. Here she comes. There we go. Okay, come on, come on back. back. You, we just we lost you with everything you just said. Yeah, say that again. Wait, what did I say? What? <laughs> I don't know. We heard, we lost. We didn't hear any of it. <laughs> okay. No, I I I, I want I want to just say that um, I think Elizabeth's work is it's really subtle. I think I think that's what that's that's the point I wanted to make mm. is that it's hard to pinpoint what the like there's like who I am today, I can't, I can't say, oh, this part comes from my mom. This part from, comes from Elizabeth, you know, this right. part comes from high school. It's all like a mix. Yeah. So I think that's another thing is that sometimes um, parents will be like, oh, I don't really, I, I, I don't know what Elizabeth is like. I mean, I think that at least that's like for my mom, she, she, she right. will be like, I don't know what Elizabeth is doing. Like, I don't, <laughs> like, you know, but I think slowly as I get older, there are certain incidents where like, the way I handle things and stuff, and I think, oh, maybe that's that's from Elizabeth. You know? like, like, so, <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's another thing I just want to say in terms of like the work you do in general. I think yeah. it just it changes in such a subtle way, and yeah. it's because it's not like, necessary. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we measure it through what the project is or where you know what schools you get into. But a lot of the work, and I think Alex, you can speak to this, and and William too, in particular of the work that we did was like you said alex it's a lot about personal development uh, building confidence william for you getting clear about you know what what your stories are who you want to be in the world and and then that impacting you later you know when your sports experiences so yeah for sure jocelyn yeah yeah and like to me like that's the most valuable part it's not about the project that i did it's not about like the, the school that i got in but it's more about just yeah. little things and and still like to this day sometimes I will I will like try to kind of solve like try try to like go I will struggle with things and then like your words will kind of just like Come yeah. In, yeah, which yeah. Is kind of yeah. Oh my god. We lost you just a little bit. Yeah, my your internet just went out just for a minute. But yeah. you're know, saying that you're struggling with a lot, and then eventually things start to make more sense. Is that what you're saying? Uh oh. Okay, I'm back. No, I, yeah. I think that what I want to say is that sometimes like your voice will ring in my head, which oh. is kind of. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of creepy but it's, 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 it's to the same level as my mom <laughs> like, right right and it's good yeah. to have different voices in our heads right because we internalize right. our parents voices so much and so then to come in and have someone who's maybe more neutral to the situation you know yeah. is really helpful yeah Alex mm -hmm. what would you add about just your younger self and then we'll wrap up because this has been amazing to be with you all today wait sorry can you say that again yeah i just wondered if you'd add, you know add anything to advice to your younger you know self yeah. and yeah yeah i thought That's jocelyn brought up a good point like she briefly mentioned like you realize eventually that the stuff you're doing will be basically for yourself like your yeah. parents will be you know in your college your parents don't have won't be able to like look over you and then like unlike in high school teachers don't really um care like like doesn't really have like also like look over you that much too so yeah um like unless you're like seeking the professor like they won't you know actively like seek you so i think yeah. by realizing that um um you eventually i think get like that sort of like motivation that you're like doing everything for yourself which i think yeah um which i think is the best type of motivation i guess or and then eventually you realizing damn i need to like i'm going to be graduating soon i'm going to need to support myself and all that too yeah, so yeah. um yeah. i think just realizing 
that and I think I found that like in my past year so yeah. I think and that's for like your, for your high school self like you know if you could go back and sort of create that for yourself like mm -hmm. obviously you had the limitations of being a teenager and not having full freedom yet how, how might you have created even more freedom for yourself do you think um I think yeah I think just that's a good question I'm not too sure but I feel like just yeah knowing that I think what you're working towards is you're doing it for yourself and not for anybody else that's um, huge isn't it yeah, yeah. I think that, that's going to help I, you a lot yeah what I'm hearing from a lot of my other students and from you all is the idea of having it like Jocelyn said like having a different voice you know from maybe the traditional school advice and parents you know often have the traditional advice of get the best grades and test scores and highest level extracurriculars and that seems like it's going to be enough and we all know that you know like Avery said she was like top of her class and then she got there and she was like I'm not right and and it's like figuring out how we distinguish ourselves but yeah just that having a new voice and whether that's a teacher at your school or a coach or a mentor like the programs we do you know something like that yeah, that's, that's great. Carolyn, what, what would you add to that about if you could go back to high school? Is there, can you imagine yourself when you say get a spine, you know, how would you create that freedom or, or confidence for yourself? I kind of hesitate to make any like more concrete suggestions because like if you're suffocating, I don't want to add another thing. Like I feel like I have like, oh, I have so many things I have to do. And here's yeah. another thing I have to do. Right, right. But so like, but I would say that it definitely, like with my work with you, like you were very much like just a supportive presence. So yeah. having that, it definitely helps a lot, makes you feel better at a minimum. Like, yeah. um, like, so finding someone who can be that supportive presence, like that's, yeah. um, I'll, I'll go as far as to say that's not your parents. Yeah, <laughs> um, agreed. Like, but it definitely helps a lot to make it feel less like you're like struggling and drowning alone. Yeah. Like having yeah. someone there to support you will, will at least like make it feel less bad. Um, yeah. And you in particular had a particularly challenging experience in high school, you know, being feeling pretty isolated and disconnected from your family. That was your unique experience. Um, and so it's really beautiful to hear you saying, you know, when we work together, we, you were able to have not, not just support with the app applications that themselves, but maybe we got to talk personally too about just, I mean, that's part of the admissions process and having that presence of someone maybe witnessing you and just supporting you and not saying you should or something like that. It sounds like that was, if you had been able to find that earlier in high school, that probably would have been incredibly supportive and maybe uh, encouraging kids to look for that it, even if it doesn't seem obvious yeah yeah beautiful thank you all so much I didn't know we would end up doing a full two hours together even more I'm so grateful for your time today this is so useful for younger students to learn from you all and it's, it's just a delight to reconnect with you after all this time anyways, and hear how you all are doing and thriving. Thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, it's my pleasure to be with you all. And I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. And when this is up, I'll share it with you all so you get to see all the words of wisdom that you shared with us today. Okay. <laughs> Right, bye everybody. Okay. Have a great bye. afternoon. I'll talk. Bye bye. To you later. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.